Well, uh, I've just written it. It actually um, is a word that came to me uh, by accident, I think, when I was thinking about Brechtian estrangement. And that has a long history. Uh, and the history I've told in another piece that's about to be published in another journal. <laughs> um, and that was that many, many years ago, I was um, helping to take care of an elderly woman. And uh, she, um, she was becoming somewhat disoriented. And I had just finished graduate school, which I went to rather late. Uh, and so I'd been studying Brecht and, uh, and thinking about this woman of whom I was very fond. And I thought she, uh, maybe estrangement was not only a dramatic effect, but something that happened to you at a certain age where you became um, somehow separated from your, from your time and place. And um, so that you uh, fit into a certain generation and then you begin to kind of, you, you have to be socialized into it at a certain midpoint of life and then you get socialized out of it. And so there's estrangement on each end of life. This was a kind of theory that I was making up about my elderly friend. So I've thought about it for 30 years actually. And then fairly recently when I was um, thinking about this article, the end dropped out. And I saw the age in it. Um, uh, it's a, it's an, a neologism that you know, just may pass away like the snows of winter. I'm not sure that it's going to catch on, but it was meaningful to me at the time. Ibsen and Shakespeare um, are two writers who, whose work follows an enormous trajectory of development. And we talk about late work. I, you know, I've never heard anybody talking about Brecht and late style. But everybody talks about Ibsen and, and Shakespeare, late style, and Verdi, for instance. So, um, you know, this is new work to me, and I don't know whether they're singular, but I am, uh, I'm quite confident that dramatic theory has something to contribute to the whole discourse of age, whether or not, um, whether or not dramatic literature is the prism to follow it through, I, I'm not sure. Uh, however, there's a, um, there's a certain setting that I think seems to follow older characters. And it's, it's a, a piece I want to write. I haven't, uh, <clears throat> I haven't been able to pursue it yet. Um, Faust at the end of his life. Prospero at the end of his life. <clears throat> Here is Rubeck, um, obviously at the end of his life, uh, in Ibsen. And each of these older characters, John Gabriel Borkman, uh, is associated with a landscape that seems to me to say something about age and perhaps the sublime. I'm <laughs> this is really an experimental sentence that I shouldn't be uh, uttering on camera yet. So whether or not we're following a certain way of, of a certain set of associations that seems to come up in the depiction of age as against following certain writers to the ends of their careers, that might be for me a more productive way to continue on this work. This um, relationship of dramatic literature and theory to age and age theory is obviously fairly new. But it follows in a tradition that we all know about of feminism and gay studies and queer studies and racial studies. And um, age theory has learned from all of those. And there was always a kind of liberatory uh, dimension to each of those. In fact, as we got into feminist studies, we began to realize 
uh, a kind of sexism, um, gynophobia, often called, that we didn't even realize was there until we began to use these analytic tools to look at things that were previously just like the weather. They were natural, just like breathing. You know, we didn't analyze them. And it's my hope, uh, although it sounds kind of um, ideological now, uh, that the same thing will happen with aging. And of course, it's totally associated with the natural, the inevitable, the idea of inevitable decline. It's all attached to the body. Well, we see what's happened to the body in all these other discourses. It's not just about the body. And while it's true that we fall into decline and it's true um, that we die and we can't be liberated from death as we might be liberated from the, <clears throat> from the negative effects of sexism, um, nevertheless, the, the individualization of older people and the recognition that there's so much negative projection and so much fear associated with age. Uh, I think that the same kind of recognition, if, and if this catches on as a field and people really begin to think about it and not just accept the comic type, you know, um, uh, as uh, something you'll always have with you, that we'll have all kinds of revelations. I don't know what they, I myself don't know what they are yet about how we've constructed age. It's not just a natural effect, but a socially constructed identity that, uh, that will change with this kind of attention.